be the best man you can be. Like, it was a very simple message. And then it would be like, you're an idiot because you have a Bible. And it's like, I just want to punch you in the face. Yeah. I don't remember joy being something that was talked about in church a whole lot when I was growing up. Joy. It was the name of the Christmas series here, mm. what, two years ago, I yeah. think? The Green? Mm -hmm. It was two years ago. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't remember it much. I grew up Methodist, though, and so if I'm being real, real, real honest with you, <laughs> I couldn't tell you what one message was ever about. Oh, really? Growing up. Because it's all very, like, ritual. Mm. It's kind of how it feels. Mm. Like, you know at what point in the service we're at. You know what's coming next. It's all in your, like, mm. worship God deal. and mm. it's, Your bulletin, I guess is what mm. they were called, church mm -hmm. bulletins. Except it wasn't a bulletin. It was just like an order of service. Mm. It's like Apostles' Creed, Lord's Prayer. He's going to talk for ten minutes. We're going to sing these three songs. Mm. You know, it was just very, like, mm. bang, bang, bang. I don't, I don't. I went for 15 years, 14 years of my life, and then with my dad every now and then mm. after that. I don't remember one message. Nothing ever mm. stands out as impactful to me. That's wild. Uh, Especially Joy, though. That's crazy. Uh, we, I was, wasn't this church. I was, uh, when I was active duty, I went to a church down in Biloxi, Mississippi. Um, it's called Church of the King. Mm. Um, there was Pastor Steve. Uh, he brought a message, and it was Christmas. It was like right before Christmas, and he was like, it's going to be a message about joy. And so we were thinking about, you know, bullet points about, you know, Holy Spirit, you know, about how to be happy in times when you shouldn't be happy, all these things. And he comes out, and he just basically just does a comedy stand-up. <laughs> just, he just gets up there with his, like, his mic, and he just goes through, like, a whole, like, comedy routine, basically. And we were just sitting there dying laughing, because this guy, he's, like, a pretty serious dude. And so to, for him to get up there and be like, hey, we're talking about joy tonight, and just give us a stand-up comedy routine. We were just sitting there dying laughing because it was. It's. It's always. I think it's like um, uh, the, the 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 funniness comes from like expecting something one way yeah. and then getting not getting that. It's like the and, bait and switch. Yeah, yeah. So it's like kind of reminds me of like a Marvel movie is where they have. They're, they were so serious for so long. It seemed like there was like you know jokes here and there, and then all of a sudden Thor Ragnarok comes out, and <laughs> yeah. it's the exact opposite of what you think a and Marvel then, movie. Uh, would be. Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy, the same yeah. Way. yeah. Except for the last one, it was sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, you gotta have a little heart in there as well, though. You gotta yeah. pull a little heart in. But it was just it was it was so awesome because seeing somebody who's like so serious or a movie series that's so serious, and all of a sudden they hit you with like eh, whatever. I don't really care. Yeah, I'm a pastor, but you know these funny things happen to me in my life. You're like, well, that's, that's relatable. That's uh, something that you can relate to. And uh, it was just, it was funny. It was an, it brought up me and Jay. I have no clue. I don't remember any of the jokes that he made, but it was an, it was an awesome uh, Christmas series. And uh, I'll probably never forget that he just stood up there and did a comedy routine. Did he, were there points <laughs> that he made? Yeah, 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 basically like kind of the same points that everybody makes, but he just didn't like very quickly. Like uh, he was just like, you know, joy comes from the Holy Spirit. Um, you can have, you can be happy in times where you shouldn't be. Um, just like a couple, like, he just like you, a pastor would expand on on those, but he was just like, here it is. Okay, now let's tell some let's tell some funny <laughs> jokes that kind of align with those, yeah. those points. But yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. But I do have a verse. Okay, we can shoot shoot with. Um, it says it is Isaiah fifty five twelve. You will live in joy and peace. The mountains and his hills will burst. Mountains and hills will burst into song, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. And so was, the question to me to be asked is, does God promise joy? Yeah, I, I think so. If you look at, um, what is it, John fifteen eleven, these things I've spoken to you, that my joy may mm -hmm. be in you and that your joy may be full. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, and fruit of the Spirit, joy is one of them. Yeah. I think that he does promise joy. I think yeah. he promises it. He creates us with a, a capacity we talked about last week, and then the fullness comes from him. And so, yes, I do think that he promises the fullness of joy. I don't think, I think for us, though, we have to, to understand that God's ways are not our ways. Mm. And so what does that mean for joy? Mm. Does it mean that we're just going to all the time be happy? Mm. Probably not. But that joy is a different thing. Like it's a, a, the ability to call upon God, the ability to lean into him, to be 
sustained in dark and treacherous times and trials and painful situations. Um, I don't think it's always the same as like a comedy routine yep. that makes you happy for a moment. Yeah, no, I agree 100. percent And and Isaiah is speaking to um, the Israelites, but he's giving a prophetic message. Mm. And so he's saying, "This will happen to you." He said, "You will live in joy and peace." And he's talking about Jesus coming. So he's talking about in the time that we live in now, after Jesus has come and he's ascended into heaven, you will have joy and peace. Um, you might not be going through it right now. It's kind of a tough situation that you're in, but whenever Jesus comes, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. You will have joy. You will have peace. And the mountains and the hills will burst into song, and the trees in the field will clap their hands. Think about what an incredible time we live in. Mm. So the Old Testament, God descends and impacts on the people around yeah. him. There's different points on, on, on the people that we're reading about in that moment. Jesus is here. He's in one place. He has a great impact, but he's in one place. So unless you're in his presence, that impact isn't immediate yeah. to you. Right. But we live in a time period in human history where we are all individually impacted 24-7 by the Holy Spirit. That's an absolutely incredible... Like, if you really think about... Yeah the the essence of god impacting people we live in the greatest period of time in history yeah. for that impact because we get to live our life with the spirit living within us if we make that decision to follow him it's really incredible i haven't really thought about it till yeah yeah so yeah me and jason were kind of working through this last night and she was thinking like it's it's prophetic it's it's something that's going to happen and those those people with that time who read it and heard it they didn't. They weren't able to receive that. They were no. like, we're looking forward to that, and we are the generation and all past, present, or the near past. Those people who are, we've all been able to and have that happen to our lives and um, be able to experience that, which a lot of people in the past they didn't get to experience that. So yeah, Ed Young um, has the quote he says all the time. I don't know if it's his or if he took it from somewhere else, mm -hmm. but he said the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, New mm -hmm. Testament is Old Testament revealed. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, when you hear that from us, we're on the other side. We're on the end of this storyline, you know. We're moving towards the end of days, and we are inside of this period where the Holy Spirit lives among us, and it's revealed the full prophecy of the Old Testament already. We live in this space now. So we see the full revelation outside of the end time um, of the Old Testament playing out. That's pretty crazy to yeah. think about, like... I don't know. That really just kind of boggled my mind a little yeah. bit. <laughs> That's good. Um, I have another verse that I want to... Let's, let's, let's read it through, and then we can talk about it. Okay. This is uh, Jesus speaking. It says, then... This is Luke 6. Jesus turned to his disciples and said, Blessed are those who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are those who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are those who weep now, for in due time you will laugh. What blessings await you when you, when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man? When that happens, be happy. <laughs> Leap for joy, <laughs> for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, their ancestors treated them in ancient prophets that same way. What is that? Uh, what does that verse mean to you? What is that? Uh, whenever you hear those words from Jesus, what are you thinking about in, in that moment? The end of it made me think of this. It made me think of commenters mm. online. Um, commenters. Commenters. Not commenters. Yeah. Like people who are comment. Comment. Commenters. E-N-T. Commenters, okay, yeah. Gotcha. But who will comment on like videos of faith. Like, oh, you're mm. stupid for believing that. Oh, you're this. Mm. Oh, that's crazy. You can't believe these things. And even people who are flawed in their theology arguing with yeah. different aspects that we discuss at times. And... Um, when we first started putting stuff on the Point Man page, you know, it's whenever you have no followers, and we don't have a lot still, but when you have none, you're like a target, you know, because the comments are visible. There's one, two, a video, and so it's like, you're not going to miss them. Mm. You know, you hear, like, famous people be like, yeah, I'm a post and ghost kind of guy. I was like, hey, you can do that when there's 8,000 yeah, yeah, people yeah, commenting right. and liking on your video, or 80,000, or 8 million, whatever. When there's... Five, you can't really miss them because you get the notification on your phone. It's just like, like ding, oh. you got a comment. Yeah. Um, and so I remember like the first couple, I would read them and I would be so frustrated because it would be something that was so like, the conversation would just be like, 
be the best man you can be. Like, it was a very simple message. And then it would be like, you're an idiot because you have a Bible. And it's like, I just want to punch you in the face. Yeah. And there were times probably in the beginning that I commented back like I was punching someone in the face. Um, but over time, it's become, every time I read one, I think through where that person might be. Um, I first look and see if their profile's anything worth responding to. It could just be a troll. But, um, and then I respond, I try to respond in ways that are like, thank you for taking the time to comment. Here's the Bible for why we said what we said mm. and what it means and where it comes from. Mm. I hope you'll watch the whole video for context yeah. and then move on. Mm. That's, I think, a, a very small example sure. of, yeah. of that where it's like that person's not causing physical harm mm. or pain or anything. And it's not, I'm, you're not in danger from the commenter really. Yeah. But the way you respond could have a drastic impact on that person. Um, in, in this moment, you know, when he's talking about this, think about like people who don't have a relationship with Jesus who are just mad. They're mad because you have the joy that fills you. You're mad. They're mad because you have all not. They don't realize. I don't think that that's why they're mad. They're mad because they don't have what you know you have Mm -hmm. and they don't know that they don't have it. Um, and so for him, he's like, Hey, like, yeah, don't be rash. These people like be kind to them. Be, open to them and I think that that's something as as believers we definitely need to get better at um, is having those conversations when people want to shout you down it seems like it's really common now for even big name pastors and things to just be like they're essentially a reverse troll on the internet someone comments something and they use it as fuel to like Mm -hmm. fire up a base and it's like that's not the whole point the whole point is to help that person to come to know Jesus I don't Mm -hmm. think you calling him an idiot it's going to do that yeah I think uh, when you go back and look at the words um, Jesus saying like Tet kind of the remedies um, for for sadness. Um, he's like, blessed are those who are poor. He's like, people who are poor probably don't have the best, you know, but the kingdom of God is theirs. So mm. be joyful in that. Um, blessed are those who are hungry now. I'm like, if you're hungry and you're going through, you're in a rough situation where you're not able to get food, or you're not able to have a job, or not you're going through you disability where you can't work. And it's like, blessed are those who are hungry now because you will be satisfied. Blessed are those who weep now. In due time, you will laugh. And God's like, you're blessed because of these things but in just wait and you will be satisfied you will not be hungry you will the kingdom of god is yours so he's saying like all these people are going through this rough situations and the rough patches in their life and god's like just give it time lean into me and trust in me i am the antidote to these things Mm. and it's it brings me a lot of joy because i know i've gone through situations in my life where it's been just rough and hard and god's like hey lean into me you will be satisfied. You will laugh. You will, um, people will uh, exclude you because you're my follower and they're not going to want to hang out with you and they're not, and they're going to talk trash back, back behind your back, but leap for joy. <laughs> or to your face. Or to your face. <laughs> but leap for joy in those moments. So I think it's, it's, it's a good reminder uh, that um, Jesus is there for you and uh, he's going to make every, make the wrongs right. But in, in that verse, and it, think about this way too though. So he, he will provide for those who are hungry. He will provide for those who are poor. He will do these things as he promises. Remember in the Old Testament when the Israelites are wandering through the wilderness, they're hungry and God provides food and then they complain about the food. Yep. <laughs> they're, they're upset about the fact that they just have manna. Bread falls from heaven and they're mad about it. Yeah. But, you know, in our life, I think there's times where we we exclude joy in our own life because we're in pursuit of this other thing that God doesn't have for us it's not that's not for you you're supposed to be over here doing this thing he's provided this path and this way for you out of this this situation that doesn't mean that he's providing a way for everybody to become bezos and like be a multi-billionaire that's not uh, what i'm saying but whenever he does provide manna when he does give you food to eat like be grateful in those moments um you know what's funny is i was thinking um so I, I had a job change and i went from making decent money to making a lot less and i was thinking back to like when i first got out of college and like first got married mm. and it's like i didn't realize i was poor mm. i was broke in reality like the fact that i paid my bills was pretty incredible <laughs> But, like, at that time, I didn't realize it because I didn't have this, like, other aspiration. I didn't have this other taste, if you will, for, like, more expensive things in life. I was just happy that I had a car, a house, 
food and my dogs had food. Like that was literally all I cared about at the time. And then as you grow, you know, you begin to kind of drift into this other, if you grow in your income, then you're going to drift into these other lifestyles and you're going to make decisions based on new incomes and things. But in reality, you were never unhappy. I was never unhappy being broke. I didn't really realize I was broke. Looking back, I know I was broke and the, it's amazing that we survived, but you don't really know that whenever you're in the moment. And I think we get out of whack when we're talking about provision because we think, oh, he's got to provide a way for me to be healthy, wealthy, and whatever the other word is. Wise. Is that what it is? Healthy, wealthy, and wise. Healthy, wealthy, and wise. You may not be any of those things. <laughs> you may be unhealthy for a reason. You may be unwealthy for a reason. And you may be unwise for a reason. I think you can constantly grow in your wisdom. Yeah, there's a there's a spot in my life where too I will look back and uh, when I was uh, first joined the Air Force, and if you know you in the military or have a spouse or family member who has ever been an enlisted member and just joined, you don't make a lot of money. Yeah. But uh, they gave me a, a, I moved out of my mom's house. Uh, they gave me like a little dorm room to live in. I barely had enough to. Uh, get a loan on a car that I could pay for, like a whole paycheck basically went to the car yeah. but I was just in a little it was probably a hundred square foot dorm room that I lived in and had my own bathroom and I was the happiest like I was the happiest dude it could be like I, I miss no my <laughs> I miss my first house I was, we were talking about this the other day it was kind of a crappy house it was kind of just in the middle of yeah across from a trailer park like but I miss it the other day I was thinking about it. I was like yeah. it'd be nice to go back and just like have a cheap house payment yeah. and just like exist. We never felt unsafe. Yeah. It was never a problem. We never had any issues. We moved out of like, oh, we we're, we're doing all right now. Yeah. We should we should move up. Sure. Like and you know, I was dangling on that carrot, chasing that carrot. Yeah. Yeah. It, looking back, we actually couldn't tell you why we moved. Yeah. Um, but it's funny. I mean, we're happy with our house now and everything, of course. But it's just. The things we think we need and the things that we think we overlook the provision that God has already mm-hmm. given us and made a way for in our life in pursuit of this other thing that's a selfish desire. Like the Israelites were, they had provision to survive. God had provided them. He's providing them a promised land and they can't even fully grasp that whenever they get there. And he continues to provide for them. They continue to, to, to take it upon themselves to go a different direction with it. And there's always a consequence. And in our own life, it continues to this day. Like Joy can be found in the Lord if you pursue Him and to follow His desire for your life. You only know that if you lean in, you study His Word, you pray, and you, you spend time with Him um, to allow Him to discern and to make those decisions in your life. But if you will lean into those the provision is great. Like the response that you gain whenever you find yourself in alignment with God's will for your life and you've submitted to that will, you'll find joy and things work out. Like I don't mean to sound super no, woo-woo, but no, they it, do. They do. it okay. works out for some reason. And anytime you find yourself out of alignment with him and his will for your life, I feel like there's a stressor to make things work. Mm-hmm. Um, when we started the podcast, I we were talking the other day actually about it and I was saying that like I'm constantly thinking about like, other podcast ideas or other things we could do or make or whatever and you know i've tried some and they don't work and they're a stressor to make they're a stressor to to produce they're a stressor to come up with content for and i think it's because i'm not supposed to do them like it i we never sit down to do this one and i'm like what are we going to talk like i have zero fear of us turning on the cameras and mics and starting because i feel like something is going to come and it always has we've literally never had one where we're sitting here like I don't know what we're going to say next. <laughs> like, it, it always works itself out. Because I think we're supposed to do it. And if we weren't supposed to do it, we would get to the point where it's like, all right, well, that's enough of that. Yeah. And we would stop. But you have to be in tune with what he's asking you to do. And when you enter that will, there's there's something powerful about it. No, I 100% agree with you. And uh, tonight is, uh, this will come out way after that, but it's our last semester night appointment. And I'm supposed to work tonight, but I'm looking on the schedule yesterday. I'm getting off early. How that happens? Random? No, mm-hmm. no way. I'm getting off early so I can come to church, so I can be a part of appointment, so I can host tonight. Like, yeah. it's not random. The Holy Spirit is involved in that, and it's like it's it's, it's insane to see, but like it's seeing it in reality happening. You're know, like, last two nights I had to work late. Tonight, based on the schedule, I'm getting off early. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Anyway, but yes, um, my word for the year, like you were talking about earlier, living in your your small apartment building, and you were happy, but happy yeah joy 
but also I was pretty happy too. Yeah, 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 yeah I like it. Yeah, I'm not mad. I wasn't mad about it. Um, but the my word for the year this year, Scott's to come up with a word for this year um, for the new year. And my word for this last nine months, almost ten months now, mm-hmm. um, has been content. Be content, because I feel like I was always chasing, like you were saying, what's what? Let's, get, let's do something better. Let's just, I'm always waiting for something to come, and always looking forward to something that's God's like. Be content. Like you have these things in your life that you have so much joy and happiness about. Be content about these things because I've looked over my life lots of times. I'm like, man, I have. I have so many blessings that I'm like, I'm not looking at. And I'm just trying to look for what could I get more? What could I do more? What could be better in my life? I'm like, man, I have a job. I have, I'm healthy. I have a house. I have healthy kids. It's like, I have so many blessings. Like, just be content in this year. And I feel like I've, I've tried. And it's, it's, it's tough because a lot of times you're like, well, what else? you know, I'm content. Yeah, but like, what else can I do? But God's like, be content with what I have, with what you have, because I've blessed you with these things. And look back and and rejoice because I've given you these things and you have no reason to want more because you have everything that you need. And I'm mm. like, I do. And so it's it's been something that I've struggled with, but something that this year has really ground into me that I need to be content with what, what God has and what I have in my life because it's great. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it, yeah, no, I agree in being content with the the, the physical things in yeah. life, the, the things that we can afford, the yeah. things we can buy, the our family and their health. Like being content in those things is great. Yeah. I think the things we cannot be content with is our pursuit of God. Oh yeah, for sure. Our yeah. spreading of the gospel message to more people. Like those are things that every day when we wake up, we have to find the next yeah. way to increase that level to yeah. do the next best thing for those things. I don't think we can ever find our if we ever find ourselves content in what we know in the Bible, we're in the wrong spot. Yeah. We need to to take a deep look and see what we need to do to get going again. Yeah. If we ever find ourselves content and um, I was talking with a pastor yesterday and he was talking about church growth and he was talking about um, when he was pastoring, there was, his church was con- was in growth. Like they were smaller, but every year they were adding 20 people or so to the congregation. Across town, there was a church that was 500 people. And it was stopped. It was 500 every year, year over year. His church was considered a failure for a long time, and that church was considered growing because it was bigger than his. The reality was that church was 500 people. It never grew. His was constantly growing. When we, we can't get content in who we're reaching with the gospel. We have to, if we look at it and we're stuck in the same spot with the same people every single day, Point Man's a great example. Like when we have a semester night, we look at who's new, who's back, who are we missing, like if we if we wanted to, we would get on the phone and we would call every single person every single semester and try to drag the same hundred people back into the room. We do that anyway, but we also do everything we can for the next hundred people to to come in. And so, doing everything you can to to continue to to invest in the people who are there, but to reach the next person, like we can't be content in that. We always have to be finding the next thing. Yeah, I agree. I think moms are just content with like the the things that possessions and wealth and yeah stuff. yeah i was just pointing yeah. out that yeah, like there sure. are some things in life we can't be content agree. with yeah. yeah and we have to continue to push for and to push forward in um but no i think that's good yeah contentment's tough i struggle with it <laughs> i do i'm not gonna lie i'm content more now in material things than i've ever been in my life mm. but it took a long time for me to get there <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then the last point I had was uh, we talked about on the last podcast but separating joy from uh, happiness um, two different things um, Psalms 41 says oh the joys of those who are kind to the poor the Lord rescues them when they are in trouble the Lord protects them and keeps them alive he gives them prosperity in the land and rescues them from their enemies the Lord nurses them when they are sick and restores them to health um, a lot of people will say well I'm not, my health is not great so I'm, I'm not happy and I'll have joy but that's not the case mm. you can be sick you can be you're talking about you can be going through a hard situation in life where god's like it's okay you might not be happy in this moment but you have joy in me Mm -hmm. so that's that was the last thing to to put a bow on this thing is there is a difference between joy and happiness and you have to lean into joy even when you don't feel happy yeah happiness is a response joy is a decision man and it's one that we have to make in the lord um to work in those tough times and those hard situations we're going through amen Cool. Cool. This has been the Point Man Podcast. I'm Zach. I'm Luke. Make sure you like and subscribe before you get out of here, and we'll see you next week. See you.